Since this is a hot topic all over the world, I'm sure that that will also be the case here. So at the end of my presentation, you can hand in your questions on paper, but if you also, we can also give you a microphone for you to ask your questions here in the floor and try to be brief so that we can take as many questions as possible. I coordinate this center, Sir Budi, that provides free information to journalists, but there is also free access uh, to the information on the website for the general public. This is the link, www.propuestaparaterminarconlapobreza.com and www.rentabasicadignasha.blogspot.com. After writing the text for this uh, talk, I realized that I wouldn't have enough time to read it all. So tomorrow, on this site, I will post the original talk in its full version. And here I'm going to try to share with you a summary, a synthesized version, so that I can stick to the time allotted to me. Usually, I don't uh, read my talks, but in this case, I made an exception. And I'm going to read, because what I have to say is extremely important. So I would rather use chosen words without making a mistake. I have four very good pieces of news uh, to give to you that have the potential to make a change for the better um, in the world as we know it. And this sets a new paradigm, a new way of looking and thinking about politics, economics, and the organization of societies. By way of introduction, we are going to watch two short two-minute videos. One day you will find yourself talking to a cognitive system and you won't even realize. Hello. Hola, Amelia. Hello, Amelia. Your address is 17th State Street. Yes, that's right. Robots are coming out of the factories. The fourth revolution has already started and is using all types of increasingly efficient and autonomous machines. Amelia is always available. It can keep several conversations at the same time at a professional level, every day of the year, at any time, during the day or night. The mass uh, technological wave that is most reliable and cheaper than human beings has created a revolution in full employment. This could lead to the loss of millions of jobs in any sector. An unprecedented situation is going to happen in the labor market. What happened with the video? And so what about the world of technology? The statistics are quite worrisome because it seems that robots, please listen to this, robots could eliminate jobs by 2025, only six years from now, robots in the world could eliminate 75 million jobs. That is why yesterday we said that we need to consider about the new programs, the new professions, and we also need to consider this information. Yes, that's right. And five years later, in by 2030, 800 million jobs will be lost. 
Here you can see it on the screen. That is at least what is claimed by IT experts from the Oxford University or World Bank economists who are making alarming statements with these data. Some of the jobs at higher levels of risk are those that involve physical activity in factories, industrial sector, perhaps bricklayers. Um, machines are taking care of many of these activities. Experts say that the programs of education that will be more popular would be data analysts, design managers, experts on social intelligence, programmers, and software developers. Companies are going to look for those professions. In the U.S., there are already forecasts uh, for changing the university syllabus and curricula to move more to the technological side. Experts say that robots take very little space. They don't get sick. They don't need to negotiate wages every year. They don't submit claims. There is no envy or competition against their fellow robots. That is what companies say, those that are looking into this situation and that forecast the job losses for the next 10 to 20 years. Yes, exactly. No, less than 20 years, 10 years. In our TV station, we see this, and our country is ranked 17th as the best country, as one of the better prepared to receive this kind of technology compared to Mexico, Colombia, Brazil. So Argentina is already using this kind of machine, so we'll start soon with the toll plazas, for instance. In the first video from the Spanish television, I only saw one minute. I don't know why I stopped after one minute, because actually it was a two-minute video. The remaining portion that we didn't see spoke about something very important. That is that many people think that basic income is a utopia. But um, it is less a utopia than promising um, jobs. That is what the video says, that promising that there will be jobs will be more uh, utopian than thinking about a basic income. On the second video, we saw the news from a TV show in Argentina, and they said that According to forecasts, there will be 75 million people displaced from their jobs, and five years later, by 2030, 800 million jobs would be lost. So look at the exponential growth of a labor replacement. So what would happen in five years after 2030? Perhaps we would have 80 or 90 percent of the world population jobless? That could be a valid question. As I told you before, despite this, many could think that this is a negative aspect but, or a negative situation, but this gives us grounds to share with you four significant pieces of news as regards the future evolution of the world in the next coming years. The first piece of news is that new technologies applied to labor, especially robots, AI, and automation allow for an increase of production and a, reduction, a considerable reduction in costs. Every year, these technologies are enhanced, thus raising the product, production capability all over the world. That is good, more production at a lower cost. The second good piece of news is that the new technologies, uh, over superproduction capability to produce more foodstuffs, more drugs, more homes, more clothes, for the first time in history of humankind, will make it possible for each state to provide to each of its inhabitants 
from the moment they are born throughout their life until they die every month an income in the form of money and services uh, to allow that individual to live a decent life without lacking any of the basic uh, elements uh, to live a dignified life. This will bring about an end to poverty. Poverty that has existed for so many years would come to an end. This income would be given to those who work and those who don't work. Those who want to work and make a salary would get this additional basic income in addition to the salary. This income is known as the uncon unconditioned basic income, universal basic income, that can be applied to any country regardless of its model, uh, capitalistic, socialist uh, model. The third good piece of news is that the implementation of basic income is politically feasible, indispensable, and unavoidable. Many proposals to improve the world failed over time. They never got to fruition because they were politically unfeasible. They encountered a strong opposition from many sectors. In this case, the universal basic income will be accepted by all economic sectors, the most powerful ones and the least powerful. Because if this uh, income is not accepted, all individuals would be affected, and companies would close down or they would um, size down because they would have no consumers. The system for that would make it possible for businesses to exist and to have a profit will need to have consumers. So this will lead to a crisis of consumption that will have negative effects for all. But in addition to that, there will be lack of governance uh, as a result of the political and social crisis derived from unemployment and poverty and exclusion. Countries would not be governable. The Oxford University and the World Bank shared uh, the results of some of their research studies, and these uh, illustrate and um, also supplement uh, the forecast by other experts. And they say that between 50 to 80 percent of jobs will be replaced by new technologies by 2050. And in their reports, they break down this information on a country-by-country country basis. To give you some examples, they say that in the U.S., 47 percent of people will lose their jobs. In Argentina, 65 percent. In India, 69. In China, 77 percent of people will lose their jobs. If states do not provide the so-called universal basic income, the lack of governance will be a fact. So the universal basic income as a proposal is having for the first time in the history of humankind across the world support from people from all sectors the business sector and the wage earner sector, the rich and the poor, people from the left and people from the right. Universal basic income benefits all because there is no other proposal put forward by any other sector that identifies how this uh, expected unemployment situation could be addressed. The new types of jobs 
that uh, could be created and that do not exist nowadays and that we ignore what they could be so far, in most of the cases, we should expect these jobs not to be handled by human beings, but rather by automated systems and robots. So, the first good piece of news is that the, these technologies have a super production capability of goods and services. The second good piece of news is that thanks to that large volume of production, they can provide to all individuals what they need to meet their needs in terms of money and goods. The third good piece of news is that this is unavoidable because politically this is the only option available, no matter who likes it or doesn't like it. There is no potential opposition because right now in the world there is no other viable proposal to provide a solution to this situation that doesn't take into account the basic income. But I told you that there is a fourth good piece of news, and that is one that is specially uh, targeted to Argentinians, those who live in this country. Argentina has optimal conditions to be the first country in the world to implement basic income and thus put an end to poverty in the country. It would have the economic and political support of all sectors because the world is interested in running a test in a specific country to see the benefits of this basic income as the only possible way of avoiding the, uh, the um, crisis that we described earlier. Then other countries, other countries would follow suit. Argentina is potentially one of the richest countries in the world, considering its natural resources, its vast territory. It has uh, solar energy, wind energy uh, capabilities. It has gas and oil reserves and an abundance of minerals. It has the largest reserves of lithium in the world. It has um, fresh water and it has an invaluable wealth in its um, submarine uh, platform shelf. And there are only 16 inhabitants per square kilometer. The United States has 36, Spain 93, France 122, China 146, Italy 207, Germany 234, UK 270, Japan 336, India 441. So once again, Argentina only has 16 inhabitants per square kilometer. The Argentinian people want and need to look for new ways to address its huge economic problems. So it is convenient for the Argentinian people to look into this proposal, to be the first country in the world to implement the universal basic income system for all its inhabitants. Argentine rulers may choose this path or not, but now the people is aware of its existence. Every Argentine citizen has to decide what is best, to continue complaining about the bad situation in the country or demand that this alternative be looked into and debated. The sooner the debate starts, the better for the country. Now, thinking about the need that sooner or later this basic income will have to be implemented, experiments have to be to take place in different countries, Finland, Germany, Japan. Canada, Mexico, the US, Namibia, Kenya, Mexico, thousands of people were given this income as a test to see the change in behaviors and the results were quite good. Most of the people used their time to do things that were useful for them and for the society. They improved their health status and their ability to study. There was a significant reduction in crime rates and stress levels, and they continue performing paid jobs 
at a lower level than in the general population. Countries need to be encouraged to start implementing this basic income system gradually to avoid the crisis of unemployment to affect them seriously, leaving hundreds of millions of people in debt and poverty. The, only, the sole fact that the population will have information about the pros and cons of this system is beneficial for society because they can open their minds to the a new proposal, a proposal that is different from those ex the incumbent ones to see how life can be organized differently and how the economy in a society can be organized differently. Last year, there were two important developments. I would call them historical developments in the evolution of the concept of the universal basic income that showed the world that, from an economic standpoint, it is feasible and necessary to implement this basic income. One of these developments happened on January the 23rd of last year after receiving advice from economic experts, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe adopted a historical resolution with a majority of the votes of the legislators. It approved this resolution recommending all European states to look into the way to adequately implement the universal basic income in their own countries. The other historical event happened in September last year at the opening of the 73rd session of the United Nations. The Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, in his remarks, made the same recommendation to all countries around the world. So I'm out of time. So as I said initially, on the website that I showed you, you will find all the rationale and further details about um, this uh, topic um, because I didn't have enough time to go through them here. Thank you.